This is something that I think about often and thought it'd be a really interesting video to make. Was Matthew Stafford just an elite quarterback in just a shitty situation in Detroit and that's why he had very little success? Or was Matthew Stafford just an average quarterback that just put up a lot of big numbers? The argument that Stafford was an elite quarterback in a bad situation has definitely been on the come up especially since his Super Bowl victory with the Rams. But Stafford winning the Super Bowl doesn't necessarily mean he was an elite quarterback. So let's dive into it. I also want to note that I am a diehard Lions fan and grew up watching Matthew Stafford. So I'm going to try to leave all my bias and opinions out of this video. I'm going to give you the facts and the statistics and then share my opinion at the end. Fuck the in 2009, after Matthew Stafford played college in Georgia, he was the first pick in the NFL draft and was drafted to an 0-16 Detroit Lions team. With the Lions going 0-16 in 2008, they obviously weren't going to be good in 2009, so we'll give Matthew Stafford a pass on his rookie season. And then in his second season in the NFL, he battled various shoulder injuries all year long, missing 13 games, only playing in three that year, so we'll be excluding the first two years of Matthew Stafford's career. Coming to 2011, Matthew Stafford had a breakthrough year in the NFL, showing he could play ball and led the Lions to a 10-6 final record. And of course, he was assisted with the best wide receiver of all time, Kelvin Johnson and Adama Kasu on defense. Uh, me saying Kelvin Johnson is the best wide receiver of all time is probably pretty opinionated and biased. I'll have to fix it. And of course, this season, Matthew Stafford was assisted offensively with one of the wide receivers of all time, Kelvin Johnson on defense and Adama Kasu. Matthew Stafford threw for over 5,000 yards, had 41 touchdowns with just 16 interceptions. Now, Oh yes, Matthew Stafford put up great numbers this season and led the Lions to a winning record and to the playoffs. But there is a few opposing arguments that could be made saying that Matthew Stafford wasn't as good as you think he was this season. First off, the Lions were 1-5 this season against playoff teams and there was about two games this season which Matthew Stafford had one or two drives in the fourth quarter to come back and failed to do so. But with those points made, it's important to note that the Detroit Lions defense ranked 23rd in the NFL for points per game allowed, meaning their defense wasn't very good. The Detroit Lions defense let down the Lions multiple times this season, most notably in week 17 against the Packers. Matthew Stafford and the Lions put up 41 points, but then the defense allowed backup quarterback Matt Flynn to lead a game-winning drive. An argument could be made that it was impressive that Stafford led the Lions to a 10-6 record when they had such a bad defense. For the playoffs, the Lions had to travel to New Orleans to take on Drew Brees in the Saints. As you may already know, the Lions lost this game as their defense were unable to stop the Saints whatsoever. Drew Brees threw for 466 yards and the Saints had over 600 yards in total offense. Matthew Stafford led the Lions to 28 points and kept the game relatively close and then threw two fourth quarter interceptions, but you can't really blame him as he's just trying to do something as the defense could just not stop the Saints. And the Saints were also undefeated at home this season. Moving to 2012, there's a lot of expectations for the Detroit Lions, possibilities and talks about Matthew Stafford winning MVP, and in this season, Calvin Johnson ended up setting the single season receiving record. Stafford also threw a ton of passes, 727 pass attempts, setting the single season record for pass attempts, but only threw 20 touchdowns to sadly 17 interceptions. However, he was just 33 yards short for another 5,000 yard season, which would have made it two in a row. But sadly for the Lions, after a 4-4 four and four start to the season, they dropped their last eight games and finished the season 4-12 and 12 in a big disappointment. There were, however, multiple games this season where Matthew Stafford had a chance to win in the fourth quarter or extend the Lions' lead and failed to do so. Also, I'm going to be glossing over each season, just giving like a recap, and then I'm going to dive in deeper to certain games and certain stats. Stafford's 2013 season was an improvement from 2012 but not near as good as 2011. The Detroit Lions were just an average team, ranking 15 in points per game allowed and 15th in points per game offensively. The biggest downside of the season was that there was a ton of winnable games which the Lions lost in the fourth quarter where Stafford had chances to win the game. Moving to 2014, this was definitely Matthew Stafford's most successful season. The Lions finished 11-5 and, and their defense actually stepped up, ranking 4th in the league, but sadly the Lions offense ranked 18th. Stafford did lead the league with 5 fourth quarter comebacks and five game winning drives but none were against teams with winning records and we all know how things ended in the playoffs against the Cowboys or should I say against the refs. In 2015 the Detroit Lions Matthew Stafford got out to a really rough start to this season but after hiring a new offensive coordinator Matthew Stafford went crazy and threw 19 touchdowns with just two interceptions in the final eight games of the season and brought the Lions back from one and eight all the way to seven and nine and sadly after the season Calvin Johnson announced his retirement. In 2016 Matthew Stafford set the record for the most game-winning drives and fourth quarter comebacks with eight, but sadly only finished the season nine and seven. A big part of the disappointment came at the end of the season as the Lions were 
were 9-4 and, and dropped their last three games to finish the season just 9-7. and seven. The Lions would make the playoffs but sadly lose to Seattle in Matthew Stafford's third and last playoff game with Detroit. Stafford's 2017 season led the Lions to another 9-7 and seven record but sadly they weren't lucky enough to make the playoffs. This was however one of Stafford's better seasons as he had 29 touchdowns to just 10 interceptions and had 99.3 QBR. Sadly again there were multiple games in the fourth quarter in which the Lions lost. In 2018 the Lions fired Caldwell and hired Patricia so I'd like to erase all of 2018 as well but we can't. The Lions had a decent start to this season but then Stafford didn't play as well in the second half of the season they finished 6-10 and 10, and there were multiple close games in which the Lions were unable to pull out a win. In 2019 Stafford missed the second half of the season due to back injuries and there were still multiple games in which Stafford and the Lions threw the game away when they should have won notably Arizona and Kansas City. Stafford's 2020 season his last season as a Lion was very good 4,000 passing yards 26 touchdowns to 10 interceptions and a high QBR but sadly the Lions could not pull out victories. And as we all know Stafford was traded to the Rams and led his team to a 12-5 record and then to the Super Bowl victory. In Stafford's 12 seasons as a Detroit Lions there was a mix of results in there as you saw. Stafford led the Lions to three playoff games and they lost all of them. In Stafford's 12 seasons he had nine seasons where he played every single game of the season and he had four winning records to five losing records. And when looking at the Detroit Lions without Stafford throughout his 12 years, the Lions were 5-22 without Stafford and went 0-8 without Stafford in 2009, just to show how much Stafford impacted the team. Now remember, Stafford was playing for the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions, one of the worst franchises in NFL history, if not the worst. And Stafford somehow managed to still put up Hall of Fame numbers throughout his years in Detroit. But that's not what I'm going to talk about here. Stafford played 165 games in Detroit as a Lion, and he was sacked 385 times. That's nearly 2.5 sacks per game. I don't know many quarterbacks that have played 12 years of football in the NFL and have taken on average 2.5 sacks per game every game of their career. Let's compare Stafford to Peyton Manning. I also, I just looked at Peyton Manning, first quarterback that popped in my head. I knew he'd played a long time. I'm not, I didn't look for like the best comparison. Stafford started 165 games for Detroit and took 385 sacks, averaging 2.3 sacks per game, while Peyton Manning started 100 more games than Stafford at 265 and still took 82 less sacks than Stafford, averaging 1.14 sacks per game started, which is unbelievable. Stafford never had a solid protection. He was always getting taken down and hard, and everyone knows that Stafford played through a ton of injuries and was extremely tough. Also throughout Stafford's 12 years in Detroit, his passes were dropped at the highest rate in the NFL during that time. And for this, I left out Stafford's 2009 season because he didn't play the full season and the Lions are coming off an 0-16 season. And I left his 2010 season out because of injuries and his 2019 season out because of injuries. But throughout all of Stafford's other seasons, he has a 40-36 and record in one score game, which I'd say is pretty good. It's a, oh, above a 50%. I feel like a lot of people like to discredit Stafford saying he wasn't clutch because he had a chance to win this game or all of his one score wins or whatever were just against teams with losing records. But why should it matter if the teams he beat had a losing record or not? Because most likely he had a losing record as well and his team were dropping all of his passes. And I'm not even going to bring up all the unlucky moments like the Dallas picked up flag and the Megatron drop catch which was a ca I, I could go on forever. Matthew Stafford also never consistently had good defenses. Look what his defense ranked each year in Detroit. It's not very high. Only top 10 twice and top five once. And the average ranking for his defense was 17th in the league, which is below the middle mark. Maybe the Lions didn't win a lot because Stafford was always playing through injuries, getting sacked a lot. They never had a solid defense or offensive line or coaching staff, especially Patricia. What the hell? In addition, the Lions would consistently drop Stafford's passes and the Lions were cursed as you saw they had t tons of unlucky moments which you never see anywhere else in the league besides happening to the Lions. But still through all of it, Stafford put up crazy good numbers multiple times. I feel like the argument of Stafford being a stat compiler just trying to put up big numbers all the time doesn't make sense because why would he do that in Detroit and it doesn't seem like it'd be easy to do that 
in Detroit. And after all that, Stafford went out to the Rams and won a Super Bowl. Sure, the Rams had a good defense and good players, but doesn't every team? The Rams defense was ranked 9th in 2021, while Cincinnati's was ranked 13th. That's not that big of a difference. And honestly, you can put an asterisk on any Super Bowl or any sporting event victory ever. There's so many what if this or he did that or Joe Burrow didn't win a game leading drive. He had chances to extend the lead for the Bengals. Whatever, you can say there's so much you can say, but at the end of the day, it's who won. And Stafford won the Super Bowl and led a game winning drive. He led the Rams on a 12 and 5 season and then won four playoff games. He took down the Cardinals, took down a strong Tampa team with Tom Brady, and took down a strong 49ers team, and then took down Joe Burrow and the Bengals. And Joe Burrow has shown that he's also a really strong quarterback. In the end, if you haven't been able to tell which way I lean, I think Stafford is more underrated than he is overrated. I wouldn't say Stafford's like 100% top level elite, but I would definitely put him at like a low tier level of an elite quarterback ranking, if that makes any sense. Stafford, if you also like the eye test, if you watch Stafford play, the, the throws he's made on the run, sidearms, no lookers in the playoffs with the Rams, it, he's crazy. He's also really clutch. Sure, he's missed some game winning opportunities, but he's also had a ton of game winning drives and clutch moments in the final seconds of games. Anyway, I'd like to hear your opinion as a Matthew Stafford in the comment section below. And also, go check out my other channel in the description. I'm posting NBA content and college basketball content daily. I'll be covering March Madness in the NBA playoffs daily as well coming up soon so go check that out and that's gonna be the end of this video if you guys enjoyed my content i'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe it really helps me out a lot and once again thanks for watching